Hello, my name is Greg Marsicek. I'm an energy engineer at 7th Wave. Today I was going to take a little time to talk about our EUI analyzer, which is available on our website. This tool was created to assist with our Accelerate Performance effort, where we spend some time generating performance targets for new construction projects. So if you're not familiar with EUI, that's energy use intensity, it's a real common way uh, to describe the performance of a building. And the units are KBTU per square foot per year. Uh, so it's a way you can normalize uh, across multiple building sizes. If you had, say, an office building that was 100,000 square feet and a laboratory that was 200,000 square feet, you could come up with one number on a per square foot basis to compare them as far as energy uh, consumption. So this tool has a bunch of EUI data from different cities and it allows us to look at all this data on a single plot and generate trends or uh, targets and just kind of see how buildings are performing. So that is what we're looking at right now in this big plot here is a bunch of real building data. Uh, I believe this is Chicago's data, yes, from last year. So all of these are actual utility bill data. It's not model generated data. Uh, so it's really useful um, to see how a, a building is actually performing and not rely on you know, something a model would say, which can often be inaccurate. Uh, I thought first it would be helpful to show how to modify the plot, and then we can look at how to change the data on the plot. So I'll go through a few different things you can do to change the plot. Um, we have, I guess, quite a few options, but uh, not, not a ton, but enough to make the plot useful if you have a few different building types or a few different databases. Um, the first thing you can do is change the X and Y axis. Uh, right now we're showing site EUI versus gross, gross floor area. Um, you're able to change that by using these little drop-down boxes. So you, if you wanted to look at something other than site UI, like total electricity use, you could change the uh, metric on the y-axis. But we'll stick with site EUI. Um, you're also able to change the marker color. Uh, if you don't like blue, maybe you're a green person, you could change that to green. Um, but we'll stick with blue. Uh, similarly, you can also change the the symbol from, say, maybe a circle to a square. Um, there's a couple different options, but it, it kind of depends on, on what you're going for. You can change the marker size as well. So if you wanted large circles, you could do that. If you wanted small circles, you could do that. So that might help if you have a very large data set. Uh, the one we're looking at right now isn't, isn't really big, but if you had, say, 10 times as many dots, it might be helpful to have a smaller marker. You can also change the opacity. Um, uh, for example, if you had a large data set again, you could maybe go to a larger marker size and then make the plot or the, the points much more translucent so you can really see where the, the larger impact is when it, when it becomes darker. Uh, one thing you're also able to do is change the plot height. You can have a short plot or a tall plot. Um, I guess, again, driven maybe by the amount of data you're trying to show. You can change the axis, uh, the bounds of the axis. So right now we're showing, uh, looks like 4.7 million square feet, primarily because we have this one dot way out here. And unfortunately, that kind of muddles the rest of the data, which primarily falls below a million square feet. So we're able to change this just by manually typing, uh, I don't know, 1 million or 1,500,000 square feet. Uh, so now we have a plot that's a little more usable. And again, we do that just by clicking on the far side of the axis where the pointer changes to the two arrows, I guess. Uh, and we'll change that to zero. So now we have a plot that looks a little more uh, detailed because we're kind of focusing in on the, on the data itself. Another option is you can actually just click and drag. So like this. And that would allow you to kind of focus in on a certain set of data as well. 
Uh, to resize, you just hit the auto scale button up in the corner, and there we are, back to the original plot. There's a few other options here. You can zoom in, you can zoom out, uh, you can select like a certain area. The key is just being able to change the plot area if you want to look at something specific. You can also download the plot as, a, as an image, and I think that's one of the most important features is once you are looking at something that you want to possibly present to someone else, you'll want to be able to download that image and, and possibly throw it in a PowerPoint or in a Word document uh, or some other format that you're using. Um, so we have all this data here and let's say we have a scenario where we're talking to a building owner and we're trying to help them come up with a target for their new office building and we're, we're looking at, we'll reduce this a little bit quickly, um, say we're looking at uh, a new 500,000 square foot office building and the owner says, well, how, how, should, we, how should we target our new, where, what should our target for our new building be? And, well, we can show them this data, which is four offices. Um, we'll get to this down here later, but just so you believe me, this is Illinois office buildings. Um, so how would we come up with a target? How could we present that in a, a fashion that the owner could look at and say, oh, yeah, that, that makes sense. So we have a few options. Um, let's say the owner actually has an existing office building that they built. Uh, in 1995 and it's 300,000 square feet. One thing we could do is put that on this plot and actually have a separate point that says this is the owner's building that they built in 1995. So let's say it's 300,000 square feet and we know it has an EUI of 120, for example. I'm just making up some numbers. We can give it a label and this is the owner's office, owner's office building and it was built, let's say, 1995. Um, so now we have this nice custom point where we can show the blue data, which is offices in Chicago uh, from last year, and then the owner's office building for, that was built in 1995. And so this is a nice way to show like where their building is performing compared to the rest of the building stock. And maybe we want to throw another custom marker, which would be the little plus button again. And now this is going to be the new office building, which is 500,000 square feet. And let's say we're going to recommend doing something that's kind of around what the rest of the building stock is doing, maybe a little better. Um, so we'll say like 60 for an EUI. And this would be um, new office goal. So now we have another point, and that could be what we recommend they, they target for their new building. And, and you can change the colors here as well. So maybe we want that to be gray and we want it to be a cross and we want it to be much larger. So now you can see it stands out a little more. So you can kind of customize that. But this is really helpful for, you know, maybe putting a few points on there that you want to draw attention to. Um, another thought is maybe you're a facilities person and you want to plot all 10 of your buildings on your campus and kind of see where they're falling. So there's a few different um, options maybe that you might use it for, and I'm sure there's a lot of other uh, things we haven't even thought of that uh, users might be using it for. Uh, one last thing is the targets. So another, another thought is maybe that owner says, well, I really want to be aggressive, and I'm concerned about the Architecture 2030 challenge, for example, or what the ASHRAE code baseline is, or, or, or what have you. There's a few different targets that we've put in this tool. Uh, and we're considering adding others, but this is what we currently have. So you can also put targets on this plot. And we're looking at offices, and those are displayed as a red line. So the owner could see, you know, for example, uh, where the target is and where their goal is, maybe where their existing building is. So it kind of generates a nice story potentially to tell. Um, so that kind of covers all of the ways to modify the plot. Um, but now there's this question of, well, what are we even looking at? What is all this data here? Can we do anything to that? And that's another great feature of this tool. I'm going to remove some of these markers. 
Um, so this, this tool allows you to look at uh, well, multiple databases, different building types, and you can also filter the data. So let's say, again, we're interested in office buildings, but we also want to see New York and, um, I don't know, maybe Boston. So now we have three different databases of offices, and look how many more points are displayed. Um, I can actually check. There's 1,750 points on the plot. Um, so one thing you can do to customize this is, you know, right now it's just all one color, but you could also color it by database. So right now New York is in the red. Uh, Chicago is a, like a grayish color, and Boston is this dark blue color. Um, so you could kind of highlight things by different color. You could also do symbols if you wanted. You could change the symbol, uh, different symbol per database. Um, another scenario is maybe you have uh, a case where you have a building that's part office, part education or something. So you could select two different building types and display them on the plot. And you could do the same thing then. You could maybe color the points by building type instead of by database. So you have a couple options. And th this might be helpful if you're trying to look at some mixed use facility and see which, uh, which use will be driving the EUI. So for example, if you had a lab and an office, it might be likely, depending on the type of lab, that the lab EUI will dominate the office EUI. Um, so one thing you can do is add custom filters I had mentioned earlier. So this is pretty basic right now. We're just sorting by what are the CBEX uh, defined categories, education, food sales, for food service, and, and so on. But a lot of the databases actually had much more specific building types. Uh, so it wouldn't have been just education. It would have said daycare or preschool or uh, K through 12 uh, education facility. So we retained all that data and we just condensed it down to these general uh, building types. Uh, but we, we wanted to keep that because now we can do a custom filter. And maybe we want to filter by secondary building type. And that would be the more specific building type. And now we could say, not only do we want to look at education buildings, we only want to look at uh, preschool daycare buildings, for example. And there's probably, there's one <laughs> in our data set. So, you know, as you get more specific, obviously you're going to really eliminate a lot of the data, but oftentimes that's what you want. So that's one nice feature is you can filter the building type more specifically. You can also filter by many other things, uh, the size, the year built. So there's a few other options here. And a lot of these were just driven by the data given in the, the benchmarking data set. So some of them did say what year the buildings were built or how many, if it was a, a campus that had more than one building, it would, would have said that as well. Uh, so in a way, we're a little limited on how detailed this uh, data can be, but we tried to include all of it in a kind of an organized matter, manner. Uh, you can change how things are filtered, so there's some logic, is or not, and then you can also change uh, and or or, I believe. Uh, so there's a few things you can do, and then typically just clicking the X makes things go away, uh, and clicking a green thing, whether it be a plus sign or an add filter, will add uh, option. So the final part is what if this tool isn't exactly what you need? So this plot really isn't what you're looking for. You want to do some custom uh, chart or some other uh, display that really isn't um, coming from this tool. So you've done some filtering. You have a few different, you know, say we add in New York again. We have two different building types. And we're going to also be more specific and say we only want to look at or we don't want to include college universities, even though we're looking at education and offices. So the nice thing about this tool is we can download all of the data. So we're going to download data from two different benchmarking sources, New York and Chicago. It's only going to include education and office buildings that aren't colleges or universities. 
So it's a really fast way to look at a set of data that might have taken a little bit longer to piece together. And again, that's really how this tool came to be, as we were doing this manually and realized that having a kind of a basic tool to do this for us would be a lot more helpful. Um, so you can click download uh, CSV and it'll give you a CSV of this data. Um, so you can either do some other plot or you can do some data analysis or, or what have you. Um, but all of the data that it's downloading is here and I think you can show uh, more rows and obviously do more pages. So uh, the last thing is you are able to save the view or the, the, the status of this page and that's done by clicking download application state. It will download a file and then you can come back to this EUI analyzer page and click um, restore from a state file and it will ask you where that is. You'll locate it on your computer and you'll load what you were save, saving previously. Um, so that can be kind of nice if you have to maybe put something together and you want to show this in real time uh, in a meeting. It's actually kind of nice. We've went to design meetings before and brought this up and in real time had some discussions and added some points and, and found that it was actually a pretty handy tool um, to bring along. So that pretty much covers how to use the tool. There might be a few other features, um, but really that's the bulk of what we use it for. We're always trying to add and improve. It's definitely uh, not a completed product or anything. We're looking to add more databases as we go and find uh, additional locations of use. We definitely want to include those. Uh, and also uh, features and functionality, we're always looking to add different things uh, as we find uh, need for them. So I would appreciate uh, any comments. Feel free to email and let me know if there's any uh, glitches or errors. We've definitely caught a few things, but certainly it seems to be running fine as is, but let me know if you find something that is of issue and we'll, we will get on that right away. So I hope you enjoyed the quick discussion today about the EUI analyzer and definitely email. If you have any other questions, I'd be happy to help you out uh, or call uh, either or. And thank you. Mm -hmm.